We wanted the public to know that we are consciously, um, as leaders, making a decision to make an impact on our community. Um, and it's worked for me. Um, the clients love it. Uh, the charities, of course, are shocked when it happens and they um, benefit from it. And I make the most amazing friends and have fantastic clients as a result. I tend to attract the type of people that I want to do business with. We believe that you are strong by design and you were made in God's image to have a strong body, mind, and spirit. You're listening to the number one strength and health authority podcast in the world. So let's get ready to unlock your potential and transform your life in today's episode. Hi, and welcome to the Strong by Design podcast show. I'm your host today, Coach Tanya Fines, and joining me is my very dear friend, Mary Jane Rickles. Um, I'm absolutely, I'm so honored that, uh, Mary Jane, thank you so much for saying yes and for agreeing to be on the show because I love what you're doing and we're going to let you tell the entire audience all about it. But first of all, thank you. Um, Mary Jean was one of the first few people I met when I um, came to Tampa and we just sort of became fast friends. And as I learned more about her and what she does, um, she's someone that I have mad respect for and look up to very much. So Mary Jane, welcome. Thank you, Tanya. I have mad respect for you as well and appreciate all that you're doing to make the world a better place, including me, so. Uh, <laughs> well, with that, let's, I wanna talk about you. So for our audience, can you just tell us a little bit about yourself? You know, you are a, you are a Tampanian, which is a rare find in Tampa. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah, just tell us a little bit about yourself and your background. Well, I appreciate that. Um, I was born and raised in Tampa, um, and uh, grandparents were here originally. I uh, lived over in Clearwater Beach. When my uh, kids were little, we moved up to Pasco County, which is just a little bit further north of Hillsboro. Um, lived there for about 10 years, and then moved back to my hometown of South Tampa in Hillsboro County. Um, about 10 years ago as well. And so pretty well know the Tampa Bay area. Um, love it here. Um, went to University of South Florida for my bachelor's, got my master's in health administration, which is another story. Um, nobody goes into real estate on purpose most of the time. Um, it's usually a, a series of events that we stumble into this field. But that being said, um, most of my background is in community benefit and serving the public. So when I moved into the type of business that I do now, it had a huge influence on the decisions I made in starting my business. Yeah, and that's very evident because since I've known you, you are always showing up somewhere for some charity, some foundation, some kind of event, and not just showing up as far as like just the business side of what you do, but showing up because it's really part of who you are. It's like very centered in, in who you are and what, what means a lot to you. That is very true. Um, I, uh, I worked with a company called Lifelink for about 12 years um, handling, um, it, I didn't procure the organs, but I facilitated the procurement of organs and influence those in hospitals um, so that we could improve our organ donation rate for many years. Got to work with organ recipients um, and the donor families, understood the benefit of that for a long time. Um, that made me feel really good about the value add that I gave to the world. Um, and then moved into working for a hospital uh, here locally, which was a big trauma hospital called Tampa General. Um, and handled their community relations, which meant that I went out into the community and spoke on behalf of the hospital about the good work that they do. A lot of times brought the staff out into the community to provide education and prevention and help sponsor charities throughout the Tampa Bay area. So when uh, life happened and that job was no longer available, um, I created a position that brought in my community benefit background into real estate, uh, which my husband had been doing since 2008. And uh, when I said I would 
joined him in that endeavor, I said, I have to bring that community benefit side with me. And um, that's how we created LiveWell. Yes, and I want to take a step back for a second because I can't remember, we were, I think it was a meeting it was like a week or two ago and we were, you know, it was talking about pitches and, and that's a big thing now. It's like, you know, what's your pitch? If you were to get on the elevator with somebody and they ask you, what do you do? You don't just say, well, I'm a realtor or I'm a banker because that's kind of the end of the conversation. Mm -hmm. The idea is to have an answer that can, that really um, is a catalyst for the curiosity, like for somebody to ask more and find out more. Mm -hmm. And when you answered that, when um, James said, what's your pitch to share it with us, I was like, that's really good so I'd like you to share your pitch with us so if I were to ask you so what is it that you do Mary Jane I endow charities through real estate okay so then talk about like talk more about that because that would be a question like, oh she endows charities through real estate how does that work yeah no problem um, so <clears throat> as I mentioned when I moved into real estate I decided to bring a community benefit piece to it because I wanted, it's always been a part of me to want to make a difference in the world through the type of work that I did. Um, if I'm going to spend 30% of my life or more now in real estate, um, doing something meaningful, it has to have an impact. Um, that said, um, my husband and I sat down, determined that I would give, we would give 5% of our commission to a local charity of the client's choice with each home sold. Um, and when he said that, I looked at him and I said, is this legal, number one? Right. <laughs> yeah. I, I haven't heard of anybody doing it. And is anybody doing something like this? Because I want to understand, you know, what are the ramifications? How do I do this? Um, honestly found out that nobody was doing anything where it was a conscious wow. effort, an uh, upfront choice to tell the public, I'm giving 5%. Um, naturally, there are uh, real estate agents that give part of their commission or give an annual contribution to charities. There's a lot of wonderful, generous realtors out there. Um, but it could be that, you know, they give a certain amount and only they know or they give it if it's a good year. Um, it could be, you know, a portion that they're familiar with, but they don't implicitly or explicitly, excuse me, state up front, it will be 5% of my commission, which was part of our focus. We wanted the public to know that we are consciously, um, as leaders, making a decision to make an impact on our community. Um, and it's worked for me. Um, the clients love it. Uh, the charities, of course, are shocked when it happens and they um, benefit from it and I make the most amazing friends and have fantastic clients as a result. I tend to attract the type of people that I want to do business with, um, which are givers and that is a beautiful thing because they're attracted to the model that we have um, and uh, that means something to them as well. So uh, that is how Live Well in essence works. Um, and we're excited about hopefully expanding that over time um, and adding agents to our team so that we can make an even greater impact um, in time. And like you say, this is something, it's not just um, you're committed to a specific charity or uh, you know, here's the charities that you give to once a year or when it's a good year or when you're feeling extra, you know, Christmas time, like occasion, the occasion donate. This is consistent, the sale of every home, 5% of your commission is going to a charity of that, the, um, the seller's, the buyer's choice, the seller's choice. The, the client's choice, it could be a buyer or a seller. Um, yes, um, and it's not their money, it's my commission, it's the money that I make. They just decide who that's gonna be because I want that donation to be meaningful for the client. Um, it's it's meaningful to me because it's meaningful to them in the community. Um, and it's always entertaining to find out which charity they're going to choose because there's so many interesting, you would not believe the number of charities that are out there. I can imagine. Out. And I thought I knew them all when I worked at Tampa General, but I had only touched the tip of the iceberg. Um, there are a lot of beautiful people out there trying to make a difference on the flip side 
Um, and uh, it's, you know, it's a beautiful thing when your business operates ethically while they pursue profit. Um, you feel like you're making a difference. You get your stakeholders involved, that is the partners that you do business with, which could be title companies and inspection agencies and insurance um, you know, providers, uh, the lenders uh, get involved. So the stakeholders all get involved. Um, I include the partnerships that I have with my agents as they join. They um, provide the 5% as well and we contribute to that. We feel good about uh, humanity and adding to the, uh, improving the environment. Um, so it's, it's just a, a big picture way of doing business that really speaks to us. A lot of people might call it conscious capitalism, um, where it's a conscious effort from the leadership down to let the world know that they are operating ethically in an effort to make a difference on the planet, that being humanity or the planet that we all walk and breathe on. So, um, and that's so beautiful. It like is. That, that it really, is really is beautiful. And what I also want our listeners to know is that you just don't show up with a check because um, you also show up personally to the walks, to the drives. Um, we were, I think it was before last fall, you were at the, what was it called? Was it called Out of the Darkness? That yeah, we were there's at? a, um, yeah. the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention each year has a walk. Um, I happen to have a few clients that have been impacted by suicide. Um, and had chosen them and you know we wanted to be a part of that and it meant a lot for the clients for us to be there um, yeah so we definitely do try to stay engaged with those charities um, when we can um, when the agents join we ask them you know is there a charity that means something to you um, because as you are engaged in that charity we want to know about these events so that we can support you as an agent um, because each agent including myself and the leaders are all specifically involved in certain charities. Um, and uh, we talk about what's going on in that realm too, so that we can support each other. Yeah, it's it's really an amazing, when we sat down last year and you were talking about the business model, I was just looking, my, my head was just like spinning, like, wow, this is not just, a, you know, we, we're a real estate team and we support multiple charities. You're a real estate team that is incredibly like you're immersed in the philanthropic side of Tampa Bay because it, like you say, it's not just, you're not just showing up with a paycheck. You're not just showing up certain times of the year. You're not just supporting the ones you believe in or you, that you know about. You're showing up in person to attend events, to like hand out the coffee and bring the donuts and talk to people. And I saw you talk to multiple people that day at that walk, people that were clients, people that were impacted. And it's, what I really got a sense of was that, like that connection. So while your business is in the buying and selling of real estate, the connections and that you're creating and the impact you're having through the um, the, the philanthropic side of it is like very far-reaching, very it far. Is. It is. It's um, and it keeps growing. Um, you know, it's. Um, we have a pay it forward event. Actually, we're getting ready to have that event yeah. this month. Um, Talk about that. Talk about what, yeah. what the pay it forward event is that you do. So, um, and again, kind of encapsulating the philosophy that we run with, it's a pay it forward strategy, right? We've been blessed to have your business. We appreciate it so much that we want to pay it forward to a charity of your choice. Um, and. So each year on International Pay It Forward Day, because you know there's a day for everything, it's uh, April 28th, um, we have a party um, each year. And we invite the charities that have been impacted by the client's choice to attend along with the clients and all our friends and family. And um, we have dinner, we have a band, we have a celebration. Um, and we invite each of the charities to come up on stage. Um, I tell, I have the client come up with us. We talk about how wonderful that client was to work with. Sometimes tell a little funny story about, you know, having worked with that client because you become 
part of their family for the time frame that they're either buying or selling their home. It's a you you formed a relationship. This isn't a one time thing. Um, there's a lot that's gone on emotionally, and the charity shows up. I've already introduced myself and learned about their charity, but they get up there and they tell the community who is in the audience what their charity is all about. So they get a platform to share what it's about. And then the client gets to say why, if they want to, chose that charity, um, why it has an impact in their lives. And there's a lot of reasons why. Um, and uh, we present them with a check so that, you know, the whole world can see, you know, what they're all about and what we're all about and we enjoy that it really feels great it's so fun to be a part of so yeah yeah, yeah I, I yeah I can I can imagine now I'm just for people that the, the people that are listening to the show and some of them might be realtors but a lot of us understand like real estate is one of those industries where a lot of people look at it as like I can make a lot of money if I'm willing to hustle if I'm willing to grind I can do very well it can be a very lucrative career for somebody so there might be some people listening going, okay, just a second now, doing the math in their head. 7% commission, you're giving up five to that client's charity of choice. Why? I could either, like, why would you be willing to give up that much of your commission for um, a charity? Yeah, so um, I love that you said it was 7% and I wish it was. <laughs> 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 but... Um, you know, there's not a standard commission for the home sale. Um, it used to be that the norm was a total of 6%, which you would share with a buyer's agent and a seller's agent. So what that comes down to is, let's just say it's 3%. Um, it has gone down um, to a, probably an average of 2.5%. So now it's more like five and it's two and a half. So it's in that realm, okay? Um, and it depends on where you live. It could be even less or more. So all that being said, um, it's half of whatever the total is. Got that? So even in on a good day, uh, it was 3%. Um, you know, 3%. Uh, if the commission is $10,000, um, then 5% of that is going to be $500, right? Um, so, you know, you can do the math based on whatever the price of the home is. So why do I give it, I think is part of the point. Um, the point is because I needed to believe that my life mattered. It's not that it didn't matter if I didn't do it. It meant that it gave me inside the value that I wanted to bring to the world. It had nothing to do with um, anyone else. Um, to me, it was something that meant a lot to me. And it's maybe that is selfish from a certain standpoint, but if we were all that selfish, the world would be an amazing place. And yeah. I believe that if more people did that, um, that we would have a lot of the problems in the world. You know, a lot of them would be resolved and a lot of happier people would reside. And so I felt it was my responsibility to set an example. We do try in our mission to inspire others to do the same. Partly why I do the podcast with you is because, you know, maybe it will generate or spark an idea in someone else's mind that, you know what, I really like what she's doing. I don't know if like 5% is right based on what I make or how I perform my duties, but that's an interesting way of doing business. If I go into it saying, I'm going to give, what charity is it that you want to choose and take it from there. But um, it, it just has a lot of meaning in my life um, and it brings a lot of joy to my life. And I, I love the joy that it brings to other people's lives too. When we get to that point where we're actually handing out that check to the charity with the client and you see the smiles, it's my big why, you know, like, Real estate is stressful. I mean, it's a very emotional. It's a lot of money. I mean, it's a, a home is probably the most expensive thing a person will buy or sell in their entire life. Um, and so you have to be mindful of that and be conscious of your client's emotions and feelings and thoughts and needs um, all the time. And um, it's so at the end of the day, while getting a check might feel good, 
and I can go on a vacation or buy some shoes with it, um, if I can take 5% of that and make a difference in the world, that makes everybody feel good. It's a win, 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 win down the, down the, down the board. I mean, everybody wins. Um, and I, I just said, that's, that's just how I want to do it. I love it. That that's, I don't know what to say to that. That's just beautiful. It <laughs> really is. It really is. And I hope that that's um, resonating with a lot of our listeners because I do agree. I think if more people, if more of us, as we get better at thinking, well, what can I offer with how to, how can I pay it forward? The, um, the rewards, like the, the flow of abundance back really, it just, it all, it's all just cyclical. It's all, everything just builds and builds and builds as we support one another and the paying it forward and the, and the giving back. It just creates more of that, which ultimately is part of why we're here. So just like leave some kind of legacy, some kind of mark that other people pick up and continue to grow it within what they're doing. Now, you you have mentioned you know building a team. So Live Well is is in the phase of wanting to build this team of amazing like realtors um, and philanthropic minded people. So. What for somebody that's listening, that's like, you know what, I've got my license or I've been thinking about getting my license. and I really like what this sounds like. What makes a great team member for Live Well? Oh, you're so awesome. First of all, they'd have to live in Tampa Bay. And I know this podcast is international, so that's going to be a stretch. But <laughs> yeah. Unless they're willing to move because we do like, the we live in paradise. Of the percentage that lives in the Tampa Bay area. <laughs> Listen up. Um, so, um, yeah, it's, you know. Live Well was designed not only to make a difference in the lives of, our, of, the, of the, or the, the charities in our community. Um, it was also to make a difference in the lives of the realtors that do business this way. Um, so there's a special person that fits this particular role. Not only are they community minded, meaning that they probably volunteer um, or have been thinking about doing it for so long that they're just tired of, you know, sitting on the sidelines um, or they give regularly to something. Um, number two is that, you know, they're at a stage in their career from a real estate standpoint where they need some help. Um, our team provides with the marketing, it provides the transaction coordination, um, which means once you go under contract, there's a lot of, if you will, paperwork that has to be done that the realtor doesn't need to be sitting behind a desk doing um, with title companies and banks. Um, there is support systems that come from the team in general, meaning you have a leader, you have a rainmaker, which is me, um, people that have experiences to bring to the table and we support each other. And if somebody's having a bad day or a bad week, you know, we can step alongside that person. Most realtors live in a silo um, or on, a, on an island. And um, while they may be able to talk to people from time to time, it's a very independent business um, model for the most part. But ours, uh, when you have a team, you can help each other. Um, and that's so important. And when you have a question at eight o'clock at night on a Friday and you can't call your broker because it's off hours. Um, you can call your team or your team leader and ask them, you know, what do I do? You know, this person's having a meltdown and we might not have a contract tomorrow if we don't get this done. And you have resources. And that, that helps a lot. But the big piece for realtors is that we provide the training if you are new and you're committed to this um, and the coaching the support, the marketing, and the transaction coordination um, to support that team member so that they can do their job and really just focus on selling because that's probably why they got into real estate in the first place. They didn't get into real estate because they want to sit behind a desk and work on a computer all day. You know, They probably like shopping for houses or helping people sell houses and having relationships with people. And a lot of the other stuff is ancillary, is necessary, but it takes away from their ability to make money. And you can make a lot more money if you're on a team and have the support system underneath you than you can if you're trying to be jack of all trades. Um, a good analogy is as if a realtor is like 
a dentist. I know that sounds weird, but if you're a dentist and you want to grow your practice, are you going to be able to do that if you have to answer the phone at the front desk, make the appointments, handle the billing, you know, do the kind of the cleaning while, you know, you're supposed to be working on cavities, you know, um, and then talking to people outside the office, letting them know what a great dentist you are. Um, it's hard to do that. Um, so if you separate out those roles and you have a support system like an office, like a dentist would, I mean, nobody thinks anything of it for a dentist to have a lot of support. But when you see a realtor have an assistant and a marketing person and a, a office manager and a team leader, you're like, what do you need all that for? Well, you need it just like any other professional practice. Mm -hmm. Right. So that's what it does for a realtor if they're interested. Okay. Well, you heard it, folks, from the lady herself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so with with live well and what you're doing, because I like you know I think it's so phenomenal, and and I know that other people that have worked with you that have maintained a relationship even after after they've been like an official client, there's still a relationship. Um, any, when looking ahead in the future, any plans or any thoughts as far as making live well, not just, not just like in Tampa, but like other teams in other places? Oh, as wow. This that grows is, because I mean, it's such, it's such a good thing. It's not just about the real estate, like from the philanthropic side, any, any dreams of having team, growing it to where you have multiple teams? Absolutely, to answer your question. Um, and the reason being is that the more of us that are out there, the greater the impact. So if my total focus is making an impact and I can make a greater impact by adding agents or um, teams in other areas, I, can, I would love to do that. Um, naturally, our focus for the next few years is to focus on getting this team really solid and up and running. Um, but I would be completely open to opening up a team on another in another city that um, is appropriate and so forth that can be managed. Um, really, it just takes the right business model to do that. And um, we want to make sure that we do this um, very consciously and very you know slowly so that we make sure that all the systems are set up correctly. Um, and there's a lot of learning curves in this business and there's a lot of change in this business. Yeah. So you got to be able to go with the flow, but yeah. absolutely, I think it. I think it could work in any city. Absolutely, absolutely. And like you say, the business model is key, and those slow steps. It's kind of like weight loss. If you lose a whole bunch at once, it tends to not stay off, and you find yourself rebounding. But if you do it slowly over time, it sticks. So it sounds like the way you're doing because because definitely the at the at the bottom of it it's the making an impact making the world a better place and using real real estate's the vehicle that's allowing you to fulfill that personal desire in you and to grow to build and grow teams like that um, and doing it in that way it'll stick so then when you do take it somewhere else it's going to stick and somewhere else it's going to stick because it's so it's just the default. The default right. system is there. It just has this flow to it, which is wonderful. Which Absolutely. I think would be very appealing to almost anybody that very philanthropically and community driven that has an interest in real estate. Um, I mean, it's like all the good things. All the good it things is. are in this business model. It is. It is. Yeah. But remember, it's it's hard for people to give up five percent of what they make. I mean, yeah. anybody that's in that audience that you have is, I mean, you know, you think about, you have that paycheck that comes in every other Friday, and are you willing to let go of 5% to go to a charity? I mean, most people would say no. So it's important that, you know, we find the right agents that are comfortable with that, you know, um, it's a big deal. Um, and we want agents that stick. Right, because it's hard to keep a business going if agents come and go. So within the model that we're creating, we wanna make sure that the environment for the agent is comfortable and affordable. Um, a lot of teams charge 40 to 50% to have the services that we provide. And ours is a lot less than that. And, um, but that's because we don't want them to go broke trying to do their job. If you have to give over 50% to a team member or a team leader, and then a little bit to a charity and a little bit to a broker, you're not left with much. Um, 
but if you can give a little bit to the team member and a little bit to charity, but you grow your business dramatically, then you probably want to stay on the team because you don't have to do the marketing. You don't have to do the administration. Right. I'm just thinking the whole, um, as far as time being a resource, like money's, money's great because we all, I mean, that's how the world operates. That's how we eat. That's how we get around. That's how we get to enjoy life. So money is necessary to provide things so that we can survive. But time is such a precious commodity that looking at it, it's like, okay, so this was, you know, I, I made this sale. Here's what I'm going to take. Here's what I'm giving. But I also didn't like, as far as time wise, I wasn't because real estate, it's like 24 seven from what I've understood. It, it, it's, it's, it's a lot. You got it. You know, you get in and hustle, especially in the beginning, you know, you're growing and making connections and building relationships. So there's the timeliness of that, but then factoring, okay, so what, what's your time worth? And really, is it a big, is it a big loss or did you actually gain time to do the job? And as you say, as you grow your business, it just that compounds, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. That is, it is very important. Time is money, especially in real estate, you know? I mean, they, they say, oh, you make all this money in real estate. And I'm like, oh, honey. <laughs> there is the blue moon where somebody comes up to me that I've never met before and says, help me buy a house, throws the cash down and two weeks later they have a house. But that is not normal and yeah, that is extremely yeah. rare and it's not like on HGTV where we go visit three houses and pick one. <laughs> This I is mean, not TV. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of time and energy and investment um, when you work with a client. Um, you want to make sure you find that buyer the right home. Um, and there's a lot of things that factor into that. And inventory for right now is low. So it can be years sometimes before people find the right home. And you've maintained that relationship and you've tried to help them with that process. Um, and then on the selling side, it was wonderful for a couple of years during COVID when all you had to do was put that house on the market and it was gone the day before you even put it on, you know, because somebody reached out to you. But that, that, those days are gone. Um, now, you know, everybody's back to kind of a normal, let's wait and see what the market says the house is worth because it's changing. Um, and there's a lot that goes on in managing that piece of it too. So the point being is that, you know, it can be two years, and that 3% came down to pennies on the dollar <laughs> that you made, uh, or it could be fast, but either way it, it balances out. Right. Yeah. I, I agree with that. It does balance out when it comes to charities. Have there been any, like a lot of us are familiar with some of the bigger ones, like the more media attentive ones, you know, have there been any charities that um, a client has said, this is the one, this is the one I picked that you like really different, really like just, not only did you not hear ever heard of it, but just were like, like, oh my gosh, I never even thought there'd be a charity for this. I know. Like anything yes. like, okay. Those are fun stories. So, um, gosh, right now, actually, I'm working with a, a couple clients and they don't have children. They have eight parrots that are their children. Oh, parrots. Parrots. Okay. And I've been helping them for at least a year now, trying to find the right place because when you have parrots, they need to have a controlled environment. And when there's eight <laughs> of them, that's a lot of space that you yeah. need a sunroom and you have to have those shades go up and down. It has to be air conditioned and has to be a part of the house, but not part of the house and has to be in a particular area of town. And so, oh my gosh. <laughs> so that said, back to the charity question. Um, when it came to picking a charity, um, they, we have found a charity that has a bird rescue for parrots here in the Tampa Bay area. <laughs> so we're going to like reach out to these people and they're going to be like, you're doing what, you know? Um, so we're excited about that. Another one, um, was, um, a little more interest, not more interesting because that's pretty interesting but um, a little more hearts and flowers from the standpoint of it was a couple. I had told them, you know, it's time to choose a charity. Which one would you like to pick? And they didn't know and they thought about it. And for a while, I didn't know that they were going to do anything. And then they finally got back to me and they said, you know what? Um, my wife and I 
had a really tough time getting pregnant and um, we want to pay it forward to another couple that's struggling with this. Um, we looked around, we didn't really see any fertility foundations here in the Tampa Bay area at the time. But we noticed there was something called the Jewish Fertility Foundation. And, um, and it says it's in Tampa, but we don't know who to talk to about it, so can you find out more? Well, lo and behold, I reach out to the person that works at the Jewish Fertility Foundation, and she says, are you kidding me? Like, I'm literally moving to Tampa to start the foundation like oh within the next month, she was moving from oh. one coast of Florida to another, and she said, "If you do this, you'll be my you'll realize you'll be my first donor." And I'm like, "Really? That's pretty cool." Oh wow, that is very cool. So, um, so they picked that one, you know, and I didn't even know they existed, and and so they've just gotten started, and so that was sweet. We had the charity come to their house. The couple had had a baby, fortunately, and was actually pregnant with their second child. And so, you know, it was just a beautiful thing. So things like that. We had a podiatrist who um, was a wonderful, wonderful man. Um, we did, um, James volunteered for uh, an organization that was downtown that fed the homeless on Saturdays. And they had started a little clinic um, in that charity in that church where it took place and um he let him he let the podiatrist know about it the podiatrist said you know i really wanted to go to that because these people don't have homes and i'm blessed to have one and he said can i donate my time and check their feet i mean wow so he really ended up volunteering for this charity you know he didn't even end up buying a house he moved to another city Ironically, we'd worked with them with trying to find it out, find a home, but they ended up not living in Tampa. But I mean, he donated his time to to care for the homeless people's feet. I was like totally moved by that. So you just never know what the impact's going to be. We introduce yeah. people that are moving into the Tampa Bay area. They may not know charities. We let them know about things that fit their uh, profile, so to speak, that they might like. Um, and it's really interesting. I mean, every story is different. Yeah, and that that is so cool because again, like your pitch is you endow charities through real estate. So outside of the real estate component of it, even if a client doesn't purchase a house, decides not to sell their house, just doing what you do, being based from that, you are actually providing a doorway for people to become aware of charities and things that they, you're giving people an opportunity to get involved in the community and do some good, regardless of the real estate element which is really fantastic. So like, again, real estate really is your vehicle for this whole philanthropic um, mission that mm -hmm. Live Well is doing and living by. Right. I love it. Yeah. Now, you talked about you do have the Pay It Forward. You've got that event coming up. Is there any other events or anything you guys have coming up that you want to tell us about? Uh, well, sure. We um, So for the month of November, in the spirit of you know giving, we focus on Giving Tuesday. Um, and so what we do then is I reach out to everybody I know and um, the team has then prior to that chosen one or two charities that they want to help. Um, the last time we did it, um, it was Joshua House, which is a foster home for abused children. And it was Blanket Tampa Bay, which provides blankets to the homeless. Um, and I said, if you guys want to participate, as far as all these people, I kind of put out a blast and I say, you know, this month, this month of giving in November, I'm asking if you want to contribute either a pillow or a blanket, it can be, uh, the blanket can be gently used, but clean, the pillow has to be new. I give them the links to purchase and then they literally just get sent to my home. Um, we collect them all or I'll go to their house and pick up whatever they've got. Um, it's a great way for me to meet with the clients and talk to them and engage with them. And then on Giving Tuesday, which always follows the Tuesday after Thanksgiving, we put it all in Roxanne, which is our old country truck. <laughs> I've and, seen Roxanne. She's awesome. Yeah, and <laughs> decorate it with Christmas lights and we deliver it to the charities. Um, yeah. And, uh, you know, send out a big, huge thank you with pictures to everyone who contributed. Um, so that's another event that we do. And then we do have some smaller 
kind of client focused events like we invite our clients to come to the movies um you yes. know for a movie night and things like that so yes. a little more you're intimate. always doing something there's always something yeah. And no like, shortage of activities. No, but you're, it's part of, I mean, that presence that you have and not just about, again, just about the real estate. You, there's, you, you guys are building such a presence in that part of the community about giving back and charities and support and philanthropy, which is really, really wonderful. And for me, it's like you're a huge leader in that in Tampa Bay. So I think that's really amazing and you should be, you know, um, recognized for that oh, for sure. That's very sweet. So, yeah. So where, I mean, we're going to have show notes, so we're going to include this stuff for all of you listening, but just since we have you here, where, so any, I'm sure there's people listening thinking like, wow, you know, they maybe want to find out more. Maybe they're interested in possibly joining your team or maybe just wanting to find out more for them, their own businesses, their own business models, like how you're working that philanthropic element into your business model. Where can people, where can we find you? How can we reach you? Yeah, no problem. I mean, email is probably the easiest way to send out a signal to me. Um, and, uh, you know, it's Mary Jane Rickles, uh, all one word, at livewelltampabay.net. Um, we do have a website. Uh, like a lot of websites, it probably needs a little updating, but it's there. It's livewelltampabay.net. Um, and then my phone number is 813-944. 7780. I'd be happy to chat with you um, about whatever your goals are. Awesome. Well, Mary Jean, thank you so much of course. Um, for coming on and talking about this. I'd love to have you back another time to talk more about the, you know, philanthropy part that you do and stuff. Because I, I really do, you know, um, I like getting involved in that kind of thing too. So it's yeah, something that you and I have lots of convers have had lots of conversations and coffees about. So oh yeah, yeah. Um, Behind the this. scenes, Tanya and I we're tight. That's right. Yeah, yes. we talk That's about right. a lot of stuff, and it's not That's all right. it's not yeah. all philanthropy either. That's right. Yeah, <laughs> we have a lot of talks, a lot of talks, a lot of walks, a lot of time. She's like I said, Mary Jane has become one of my dear dear friends here in town. Yeah. And I'm so great, so grateful for you. I appreciate you so much. Likewise. Thank you for coming on the show. Mm -hmm. Any of you that want to reach out to Mary Jane and talk to her about what she's doing here in Tampa Bay, please check the show notes for those links and for her number. I am your host today, Coach Tanya. Thank you so much for joining us, Mary Jane. It was a pleasure. Please make sure you give us a five-star review. And I can't wait to um, be back on the show again and sharing all of the great people that we know doing great things here in Tampa. Mary Jane, you have happy Easter. Happy Easter. Easter weekend. Happy, so, happy, happy Easter. Easter. Happy Easter. So you have a wonderful blessed. weekend. Thank you. All right. Yes, okay. have a blessed, blessed weekend, everyone. Take care, everybody. Goodbye. We'll talk soon. Thank you so much for listening to the Strong by Design podcast. If you found value in today's episode, Please subscribe so that more people can find out about our show. Plus, you don't want to miss any future episodes with the amazing guests and topics we have lined up for you.